Hello, and welcome to In Your Neighborhood. I'm Mark Crosby. Thank you for joining us. In Your Neighborhood is a program that, uh, well, the title is what it is. We visit neighborhoods throughout the city and help you to uh, stay informed. Today, we will be spending the whole half hour in Ward 1. And I've got uh, many guests joining me uh, today. To my right is the Ward 1 counselor. That would be David McCarthy. David, welcome. Thanks, Mark. Great to be back. Great to have you. To my left, Holly Roach Robinson from Granite City Partners. And next to her, uh, well, Holly, welcome. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Happy to be here. And great to have you. We certainly welcome you into the studio. And uh, next to her, it would be Joe Shea, Joseph Shea of Granite City Partners as well. So, uh, Joe, great to have you in studio. Thank you very much. Happy to be here. <clears throat> a lot to talk about. Uh, we are, if, if folks aren't aware, there is a lot happening throughout the city, but specifically our concentration today is Ward 1. Uh, folks will probably be aware not too long ago there was a topping off ceremony at uh, the public safety headquarters. We will talk about that. We will talk about uh, generally that whole area, uh, Dave. Right. Kind of a uh, radius around that uh, section of the city. Sure. Thank you, Mark. One of the big things, uh, you know, of course, is the state of the art safety center that we have going. Everybody sees that. It's coming out beautiful. But the whole area, uh, Broad Street, uh, the Father Bill's project, the cemetery, the entrance to the cemetery, that whole radius in that area has been very busy and be very active for months down the road here until we, until we get it all done. But uh, uh, it's, it's great for the city uh, I refer to it as the, the top of Ward 1, the end of Ward 1 being down the neck. And uh, you know, a lot of times I'll get involved most of the time with the neighbors and, and, and issues down there. But also the, the ward stretches up to the, to the edge of the city. So you, you get involved in, in, these, in these major projects with, uh, with the good people of Granite City Partners. We'll talk about that. Uh, the both of you can actually address this. Uh, whoever jumps in first gets the first go. Uh, maybe we'll start with you, Holly. Uh, talk about Granite City Partners and their involvement, um, not only in the public safety headquarters, but this area of the city. Yeah, um, so Granite City Partners is a small engineering firm. Uh, we're located in Quincy, and we've been working as owner's project manager on the public safety headquarters. And we've also been helping um, with drainage and some other items um, in that area. Joe, I don't know if you had anything to add to that. Yeah, we often, um, we describe it as we often exist before projects exist. We help formulate some concepts, advance the project to the point where a large architectural firm or a large contractor now can come in and bid. They know what they're pursuing. Uh, so as a small firm here in the city, we're very involved in, in a broad range of things. And then once they <coughs> they flip and become large projects such as the public safety complex. So we stay involved, but other entities really drive the projects forward. Talk about, uh, I guess, the genesis of this building, the public safety headquarters, and maybe what was looked at in other communities that would house the same number or same kind of departments that will be housed in Quincy's. Um, happily, the uh, for a long, long, long time, Quincy has needed a new police station. Uh, so the need for a new police station is certainly no, not nouveau. Um, the concept of a public safety headquarters or public safety complex, that's more of a modern approach to public safety where you're merging your first responders. Um, police, fire, emergency management. Uh, as this process evolved five or six years ago as a concept, we toured around with some of the city's officials, with the chiefs at the time, to look at various public safety complexes. So rather than having individual stations for everything, the concept of bringing everybody together. Um, we were down on the Cape. We were out route uh, <coughs> I-90. We were at the Natick and Framingham. Um, we also looked at various new dispatch centers uh, for for increasing technology because technology of dispatch is very much like the technology at home. Once you set it up, it's immediately outdated. So the goal was to be forward thinking on technology, knowing this was a five or six year program uh, before it would actually be completed. If 
folks will be able to see the current um, images, I believe, yes. of the public safety headquarters. We do have footage of that topping off ceremony as well, so people will see that, that too. Uh, the departments that will be housed, again, fire, police, emergency management, obviously not the apparatus. The police will stay at their current site, yep. the police apparatus, the, the vehicles. The fire stations, obviously each fire station will have their apparatus there. Of course, they need to be strategically placed in the city for an emergency. That, that is correct. Um, I may ask you to chime in a little bit on this, but a demand response study was done about bringing apparatus to this fire truck apparatus to this location. Uh, and it was determined that there was, like anywhere in the neighborhood, you could add, a, you could decrease a couple minutes of time to some locations, but add time to other locations. Uh, so the concept in parallel with this is to keep a station on Quincy Avenue? Yeah, correct. To keep, keep the apparatus at the stations where they currently are, because as Joe mentioned, there, there is little efficiency in bringing some apparatus or adding extra apparatus to this new public safety headquarters. That makes total sense, right. absolutely. And, and well, then of course, if apparatus was included in the site, uh, the site would need to be larger. Correct, much larger, yeah. Um, it would be difficult to house it on that site. So Joe, let's, um, I guess, get into uh, showing folks maybe what um, the public safety headquarters is going to look like and maybe the floors that uh, will employ the various departments. Happily, the um, public safety complex, uh, we have a rendering up for those who can see it, uh, started out with five or six different building layouts on the existing parcel. Um, Holly had led an analysis about do we create a temporary police station elsewhere in the city? Uh, and that proved infeasible and not cost effective. Uh, so keeping that building operational and in place while we build around it, um, to me feels very much akin to when the new Quincy High School was built around the old Quincy High School. Uh, it was six feet away at the closest point and uh, those challenges can be solved. They're complex, but it allows us to keep a very tight site. Um, we want to give some of the, the sizing of the existing building, um, Ollie, in terms of its positioning. Actually, I'll pull it up. Um, the new public safety headquarters will be about 120,000 gross square feet. Um, so we're adding significant sizing. It's about, um, it's four floors, but the fourth floor will be space that is ready to be built out for future um, future added staff and future needs, because we, we know that as the city grows, the police and fire department will grow to accommodate that. Um, so with that said, currently when it's built, community space for the time being up in that floor, is that possible? Um, there's actually some community space now uh, planned so there is a community, um, a meeting area that can be used as community space. There, there's a way that, so the, the police and fire department needs to be secure, but there's a way that the that public can access that space um, in a secure manner so that community yeah. meetings could be held there. Um, there's also police and fire uh, training space. There's a, um, a larger kind of stadium seating room for a lot of the trainings that go on for police, fire, and emergency management. Um, there's quite a few other um, we, when we get to, we've got a floor by floor graphic that we can go through to um, really highlight. Sure, each of those yeah, elements. why don't we? Um, the, the building itself, and now nobody can miss it, um, coming off of C Street. Uh, it's three stories on C Street, and it's got five eyelid shaped windows on the fourth floor that are reminiscent of some of our other historic buildings or take homage of some of our historic buildings in Quincy. Uh, during the uh, planning stage, we wanted to make sure that we really gave a nod to buildings such as Coddington um, that are these great historic Quincy buildings that we didn't want the new building to look exactly like Coddington. But we didn't want it to not be in harmony with that corridor. We should also mention that the uh, when the police station, the existing police station was added to, simply took another route and it looks nothing like the original structure. Uh, now it seems to be we're going back to history in, in a way, or at least we're trying to uh, replicate historic buildings throughout the city. 
That is correct. Yeah, we, we see that often, even um, the same thinking as the um, police station addition in 85 is the glass building that is City Hall right next to all of the historic granite, Willard granite buildings. Um, they, do, they do somewhat stick out, uh, not in harmony with the rest of the buildings around them. That was certainly our goal to stay in harmony. Was that a trend, I wonder, back then? I is so. uh, are things changing now to kind of... <laughs> Maybe not even in the, in the city, but beyond, possibly? I don't know. We, we, we you know, the, the glass uh, city hall, Joe mentions, uh, the police station that we all know is not exactly, um, you know, breathtaking. The one we're looking at now. The one we're going to look budget? at, uh, <laughs> yeah, it, uh, you know, is going to be great. And it, it does, it, it a, a lot of folks... Uh, have made comments um, over the years that we were in that modern phase for a while, even with some of the schools get a little modern and it, 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 it seems to be okay for a while and then it gets old real quick. And City Hall got old real quick, the police station got old real quick. There's probably a few others that um, that we could bring up, but, but this historic um, look uh, and, and the quality too. I mean, this this police station will be there forever. The quality is going to be excellent, and and uh, Joe and Holly uh, has worked on many projects uh, with the mayor, and uh, we all know how how the mayor is in regards to getting it done right, you know. And uh, and this is going to be another another jewel on, on C Street. So, getting back to the layout of the various floors, now we'll we'll actually visit uh, floor by floor. Sure, that would be terrific. The um uh, for those who can see the, the graphic, we'll go first floor up. Um, with respect to orientation, the top of your screen is C Street and the bottom of your screen is Broad Street. Uh, and one thing to be mindful of is the building is three stories in the front, four in the back, because Broad Street is so much lower. Um, so it's a little deceptive in terms of, it, although it is a very large building, um, from the back it looks even larger. Uh, one other element respect, uh, with respect to the building is the building has been raised up out of the floodplain. Although it appears to give it even more prominence, the primary goal was to ensure that emergency responders coming in and out of that building never have floodplain issues to worry about. Uh, for those who can remember, Broad Street used to go underwater quite often uh, during the, at the back entrance of DPW where the former animal shelter was located. Uh, that's all been eliminated. The building itself uh, on the first floor uh, will have quite a broad entryway for the public. Uh, it would be the yellow section in the center of the building at the top of the screen. And that's your public entryway when people go to visit the police station um, of their own accord. They're not arriving in the back of a police cruiser. We'll talk about that. Uh, they will arrive uh, in an atrium in the public center of the building. From there, they will have two options. Uh, there'll be two windows. One is to go to the right, which is shown as a red block on the graphic, and that is the fire prevention office. So when people need to meet with the fire department about smoke detectors or underground storage tanks, uh, that's where they will go to meet with the current fire prevention. When they go through the door and they go to the, the right side of the screen or their left, um, that will be the police window. So that's where they can get to uh, police dispatch, they can get to the patrol officers, they can get to the staff that they would would typically meet with upon initial arrival at the police station. Immediately in front of them then will also be the public elevator. Um, by way of example for people who have, have been watching the station, they've seen three masonry block towers now for a couple months and asking what those are. Um, those are elevator and stairwells that go up first and also support the steel. Um, so the center one that everybody could see is the center elevator in the core of the building. Um, the one that would be to the left or the DPW side of the building if you're standing on C Street is a um, stairwell. And then the one on the right side or more towards Broad Street on the back is the is the private elevator. You're in a secure space when you're in that elevator. So staff would come in from the Broad Street side, enter that elevator and staircase, 
and not come all the way around the building and through the front door. Just as we're talking about the space and the space, uh, we, you had addressed this earlier a bit, but what needed to come down prior to this building being built? So, so uh, the animal shelter you had mentioned, Father Bill's as well. Yes, um, you know, the, what we do generally takes eight to 10 years. It's an interesting profession that we're in. Um, but six buildings have been demolished in preparation for this really transformative structure. You have to remember back. Um, but Father Bill's was demolished. The animal shelter was demolished. The um, VFW post or 39 Broad Street that many modern times we knew as the bottles and cans place, but it had, it had quite a great history. Um, a building at the Stop and Shop gas station had been demolished. Um, and one very um, fun point about this project is the city's new fuel station actually reuses the infrastructure from the Stop and Shop gas station. So the tanks in the ground and some of the equipment was just rerouted from what was once Stop and Shop to now the city's depot. And then on the other side of the street, there was a large brick building uh, that had Auto Parts International in it that was demolished. And then there was a small two-family house on Field Street most people didn't even know existed um, that was also demolished. So the, on the glorious day when the existing police station comes down, that'll be the seventh structure that was removed to make way for this initiative. And there are no other buildings on that street that will be affected at this point. Everything is done. I'm thinking of Fratelli's is right there as well. Correct, yeah. Um, Fratelli's was affected by all the construction. Um, but so we've been very thankful that they've been willing to live through that um, for a new broad street and new concrete sidewalks. Um, but those buildings on that side will be <clears> remaining. <throat> and you had mentioned, Joe, the flooding that was a problem there in the, in the past. So how was mm -hmm. that, um, I suppose, remedied for this structure? Uh, thank you for asking. Our civil engineering roots are about to burst out, so thank you. Um, there are two tide gates on Broad Street that have protected that neighborhood from Town River flowing backwards, um, all the way back to the Greenleaf Putnam area. It goes the 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 drainage system goes that far back. Um, many years ago, the tide gates were improved. Uh, modifications to the marsh occurred. Uh, one of Council McCarthy's favorite topics, an equalization pipe was installed. These were all inter integral steps towards improving the drainage system. Uh, certainly has made improvements, but now with the public safety complex, a new pumping station has been installed at the end of Broad Street. That when there is a high tide and a major storm, we can now pump the water up and over and out into Town River. Um, so that's another belt and suspenders way of making sure this public safety complex stays high and dry and everywhere back to Woodward Ave and and, um, and Putnam will receive a benefit of that station. And I guess I'll need to ask because folks talk about sea level rise, how far do you project into the future when you're designing these structures and uh, when you're figuring out how watertight they are? So we generally design for 50-year buildings as our model, 50-year um, materials. I know we, we talked about we, we choose materials that are, are materials of yesteryear but might have durability of today. Um, and they're 50 to 100-year buildings. Uh, this building will surpass 50 years very easily. It may be similar to the existing police station that 100 years from now they may be starting to talk about a new one. Um, with respect to sea level rise and the other infrastructure work that we do, um, all of the infrastructure is 100-year infrastructure for pipes and concrete. Pumps and electrical wear out. They're typically 20 years. Um, and with sea level rise, certainly we're, we're seeing it more and more um, in Quincy, sunny day flooding. Um, but we don't pronosticate on various models because everybody seems to have their own opinion as to how quickly it's going to happen. Well, just uh, to Joe's point about the NTOs about sea level, um, we we do we get it more often than not now. I mean, and 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 the team, uh, Larry Prenderville, Al Grazioso, Joe, um, etc., 
are, are, are all on board, and I know everyone is always very conscientious about the level of tide, the storm surge, which way it's coming, north, south, west. So uh, I feel very comfortable, uh, even though Mother Nature is Mother Nature, and, and she'll do what she wants to do, but um, that the, the measures that have been taken uh, in regards to uh, protecting uh, as well as we can are, are in place. And so with this police station going in and the, the pump uh, station at the, at the end of Broad, which, I, as Joe said, I'm very familiar, that goes up Broad and then down Southern Artery and, you know, is down by the track and et cetera down there. And then there's a, a creek area that runs up behind uh, Woodward and, uh, and, and Putnam, um, you know, uh, but um, it'll, it'll alleviate hopefully some of that up there too. So it's all positive things in regards to playing defense against Mother Nature, you know. Absolutely. And just good, stepping back in history for just a bit, the original police station, when was that constructed? I know the, say the addition was... 80s. So original police station oh, original. maybe 1920s 1920s yeah. 1925 yeah. yeah addition was uh, renovate 87 89 somewhere around and there. that was during the uh, mayorship of uh, francis macaulay is that correct yes yeah. it was yes i believe oh, yeah. so it might have finished under sheets maybe, maybe later yeah okay and, and has been repaired under every mayor since uh, always hear yeah. about <laughs> good continue, point joe <laughs> continue to hear about issues with uh, with that structure uh, but again, age, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, let's get back to the um, the layout, if we could. Sure. So again, we're still um, for those who have it on screen are still looking at the the first floor. Um, generally speaking, items in in blue are for the police. Um, red or pink are for fire. Um, the yellow is common space, such as a break room. So each floor has a break room associated with it. Uh, and then gray are core building items, elevators, bathrooms, stairwells. Uh, the, on the first floor, again, the front is very public facing. The rear of the building in dark blue is not public facing at all. That's the detention cells. Uh, we've been asked many times um, by people, uh, what's, th what's that box coming off the back of the building? Uh, and when you're on Broad Street, you'll notice there's this extension off the back of the building that's two stories. Uh, that's actually the sally port. That's where if somebody is in the back of a cruiser, they are driven into a garage structure, doors close, uh, and then they are let out. But people aren't walked in the front door. They're walked in through the sally port. Um, so when you look at the graphic, the addition on the back or the bottom of the screen um, is for uh, bringing in temporary visitors to the detention cell. I do always note that the, the paddy wagon comes into the sally port, and I don't know if this is Councillor McCarthy's heritage, but they seem to have an Irish connotation to these locations, Councillor. Right, uh, right. The paddy wagon. <laughs> I'm not sure why. No. Maybe coincidental. No. Yeah, just coincidental. <laughs> the, um, the component on this first floor drawing that you see also at the bottom of the screen that's not shown is there's a parking structure. <clears throat> so it's not shown in this graphic, but there is a parking garage. Do you want to speak briefly about the garage on the back of the building? Yeah, there's a parking garage at the back of the building um, to house both police, fire, and emergency management staff. It's a secure parking um, garage, so only that staff will be able to enter and exit. Um, it is, um, I believe it has, a, it will be outfitted for about 50 um, electric vehicle charging stations, but it also is uh, outfitted to be a full electric vehicle charging station. So all of the spaces uh, can accommodate electric vehicles in the future. And then on top of the garage, um, it's outfitted for a future solar panel um, to also provide coverage for the vehicles that are on the top of the garage, but also um, for sustainable energy. Future thinking. We're, again, very future-proofed this building. Okay, the, uh, with all of the spaces being able to be outfitted for electric supply, for example, the conduits are going in, the transformers are going in, the pads are all going in now. So 50 years from now or 20 years from now, the, the best decisions had been made. As we look at the diagram, are we heading up to the second floor? We are on the... Um, the second floor now, the sally port is out of play, so it's more of a rectangular building. 
Um, the second floor is really much more of an operations floor. The items that you can see in yellow at the front of the building in the back are meeting or training rooms. Um, the second floor is mostly police. Uh, so the drug control unit is on the second floor. The lieutenants and captains are on the second floor. And evidence storage is on the second floor. Um, we worked, and Holly's been involved in this, worked closely with the, the police chief and his team about the current ev evidence storage system and the new one. Uh, the council actually approved some funding for uh, evidence storage additions this week because when that evidence moves, they can't throw it into a box and walk it across the street. It, everything is tagged, everything is monitored, so the new system is in harmony with the former system and there's a transition plan in place. Um, one interesting thing about the, the building um, is that the, uh, the fixtures, furnishings, and equipment alone of a building of this size, the coordination alone is basically a $10 million project all by itself. Um, evidence falls into that uh, category. I do remember the uh, council meeting just the other night, so I'm glad you brought that up because that was going to be one of my next questions. Oh, terrific. So the, uh, the middle floor really is an operational floor. And then the third floor uh, we start to see some other colors. So the third floor in the facing C Street, which again in the graphic is on the top of the screen, um, to the left side of the graphic is fire administration. Police Chief Jackson and the uh, administrative team for Quincy Fire would be on the left. Um, below them are moving, which will be looking straight out at the existing police station is the Emergency Management Department, Ali Slayman and his team. Um, towards the back of the building in yellow is a break room. Uh, then across the broad street side of the building, it was purplish on the screen. That is a combined dispatch and IT center. So that is really the control center, not only for the building, but for Quincy's dispatch, police, fire, and emergency. The other night, uh, a colleague of yours, a uh, former police officer, now current city councilor, Dan Minton, talked about the gym, the importance of a gym in the facility. Could you talk about that at all? Yeah, um, there's a, a pretty, I forget the term that uh, our, our friend, the Crucial Group used. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very well outfitted gym. Um, it's actually on the bottom floor, which I think we may. Um, Do not have a graphic for the bottom yeah, floor. Yeah, unfortunately we didn't have a graphic. So on the bottom floor is a space for all of the personnel to use. Um, a gym space, there's also a locker room. There's a decontamination room for the fire um, firefighters as they come back. Um, if they're coming back from a fire, they need to immediately get their gear off and have that um, washed and extracted. So that is right on that first level for them off of Broad Street. And then they can go um, change into their, their uniforms, their non-firefighting uniforms. Um, and also on that floor is a firing range. Um, which the, the police specifically can use um, for their uh, training. Very good. Mm -hmm. I, I do want to talk about timeline because initially there was a shortage of supply, supplies, correct? Yes. Uh, now, folks, we'll really see a, uh, a constant changing of that area, a constant uh, growth. Yes, the, uh, the, the project has to move backwards initially as we demolish buildings. So even though we are working, people don't see structure coming out of the ground. Uh, while that initiated, COVID hit us, and uh, that certainly caused significant supply chain uh, delays. Um, also during COVID, the administration working with Father Bills made a conscious decision to, to hold our project back for several months while Father Bills completed their new housing resource center. Which is directly across Which the street. Which is directly across the street, yes. Yeah. So originally, Father Bills was moving to a temporary shelter. Uh, however, my understanding is with COVID money and some of the entitlement money, suddenly they had an influx from ARPA money to be able to build the whole building. So rather than spend money on a temporary building, we went straight to the whole housing resource center. Saved us money, cost us some time. Uh, but we are now totally in control of our own domain. All of the father bills, national grid, demolition issues are behind us. Uh, we'll 
pushing really hard, and everybody can see that uh, with the number of workers in progress every day. And we're shooting for a fall 2025 opening and the spring 2026 demolition of that existing police station and landscaping. But uh, we're hoping to move in late 2025. The councilor had mentioned earlier, so I'm going to kind of steal your... Steal my thunder? Yeah, I guess so. Go ahead. About, um, and we've gone over the half hour. I think it's impossible to keep this. This is a supersized episode now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> talk about the park. There was talk about a park at the front. Uh, oh, I believe, it is it at the corner, on the corner of the lot? You want to talk about the memorial park? There is, yeah. There, there will be about, um, I believe it's over an acre of, of green space in front of the, the public safety headquarters once the current police station is demolished. And I believe the anticipation is to create a memorial space um, for fallen police and, and firefighters. Yes, and the goal for that memorial space is to have it mirror Mount Wollaston Cemetery. So a granite wall uh, with the pyramidal caps every 15 feet, very similar to what you see in the Mount Wollaston side, has been designed to wrap around the bend and heading up C Street, so now it really is in harmony with what you see across the street in terms of height, size, scale, and the the granite. Councilor, yeah. do you want to move over to Mount Wollaston? That was a yeah. good segue. Yeah, with a nice segue. Well, that's uh, a, not me, that was Joe. Uh, Joe. Joe knows what he's doing. No, Mount Wollaston, uh, just to stay in the area, uh, you know, the entrance at, at the beginning, people were, again, you heard rumors left and right. What are they doing to the entrance? What are they doing to the fountain? What's going on up there? And, um, you know, uh, as you can see on the on the screen, uh, the flagpole, the entrance now, it's magnificent. Uh, it just, well, it just adds to that whole gateway coming up uh, C Street along with the park, along with the police station. And at some point, as we work on C Street and come from the Fox and Hounds, down to the lights at Cardington and C, um, which is another state DOT job. We'll finally get there, and that'll be all, all done over also. So uh, it, it just, uh, it really, it's, it's really spectacular. Uh, people are going to be very impressed, and I, I know people have commented to me now when at nighttime when the the, uh, the flagpoles are lit up, uh, the Civil War monument is lit up. It's. Um, it's Quincy. It's very historic. It's, it's it's definitely Quincy. And the platform that was there, uh, I I'm going to venture to say that it probably uh, the city outgrew the size of that platform. It seemed to be relatively small for the number of times it was used and the number of people that were actually on it. I would agree. Yeah. The um, the. Cemetery has been modernized as well. The monuments have been placed in chronological order, and now there's space for the War on Terror, um, which has been a very long-running war, which uh, we do have veterans associated with. Uh, so it, the, the cemetery project is also future thinking, making space for, uh, for our future veterans. I think yeah. you had mentioned, Council, too, that um, the curve cuts, uh, the entrances, uh, there's curbs that are going in along the, the various roads. All those are improvements that uh, weren't there initially. No, the whole, if you take a ride into the cemetery, uh, curbing, the paving, uh, the entire cemetery, uh, it's just, uh, it's just a great, great upgrade. And, and, and this finalizes it uh, with this entrance. And um, I'm sure uh, there's a few other bells and whistles that'll be added on, but uh, it really came out well. So time-wise, what are we looking at uh, for completion of the Mount Wollaston project? Um, I'm not sure. I mean, th there's some work to be done in the back uh, in regards to some um, some fencing. That we're, we're still waiting on the on the gate uh, on the front of the uh, the front of this the cemetery to come in, which will be a, a, a spectacular gate. Uh, so um, I, I'm not sure if they're going to wrap it up this year or not, um, but that's something I can look into. Uh, and I don't know if they just got delayed just in regards to everything today, material-wise, and everything that they got set back on. But um, but they're still pushing forward. So there's not a there's not a lot to do, but we might time might be uh, we might have some time before we before we're done. Now I think this is in your ward. You can correct me if if it's not. But the tide mill, the southern tide mill, 
Yes, that's in my ward. And what what can you tell me about that space? And there was talk about a kayak launch next to the tide mill, I suppose. Uh, that being built out, uh, where does that stand? There, there, w- there was there was the um, the tide mill, and then you had what we refer to as the CVS site. We'll call it. And we went in, and Dave Murphy and Commissioner of Natural Resources and his crew went in and did a great job cleaning it up and working with uh, some of the Southern Tide Mill folks. But they've cleaned that up to a point where they want to try to restore that and make that a park in the back, which then leads to kayaks, which also um, led to some other boating options. Uh, One of the ideas was to bring one of the Marine units boats, the police boats, up into that end, do a little dredging probably, and up into that end behind CVS and almost turn it into a, a, a passive recreation type type center, you know, where there wouldn't be any buildings or whatever, but you'd be able to go down, go kayaking up the creeks, uh, maybe do some other boating, have more of a presence and, and liven that up on top of hopefully getting involved with the Southern Tide folks and restoring that area a little more that has been behind fencing there for a while. Um, it, it may be opening that up to the public and kind of combining the Southern Tide Mill in that area together to make it open and accessible. Is the building foundation-wise secure at this point? I think that would be a Paul Hines question, but I still think that is a struggle. I still think they are still looking at major work that they have to do before they we're able to really open that up for folks to go in and, and, and get, the, get the tour and get a look at it. I know they did some emergency work, new windows, new doors, and sealed it up, but I think that's where we're at right now. But it's still on the radar. Coming back to C Street, <clears throat> uh, talk about, if you could, uh, the development uh, or the improvements on that road. Uh, that has been done in phases. The first phase, uh, we'll go back, was the intersection at the end of Quincy Shore Drive, Fox and Hounds. New lights, new streets, uh, new landscape. And we widened the turn coming out of Ward 1 uh, to a full third lane so you could get up Wollaston Beach, and it's really improved the traffic. Um, There's still bumps in the roads at times that we have accidents or mishaps, but it really helped, they did a great job. Now we're starting right now um, from Palma up to Ginger Betty's and we're gonna do, uh, that's Department of Transportation, uh, the state, we're gonna do a lot of work on sidewalks, uh, make sure they're ADA compliant, change a few intersections, minor at Narragansett and then down by Curlew down near the Hoprow move the traffic light uh, from Ginger Betty's and put it right at the Quincy Youth Rink entrance and change that a little bit to help people get out. Slow down the traffic that shoots down Narragansett by having more of an island presence because there's always a, when you shoot across the street, if you're familiar, you gotta get a good run to get across the street. So, and that's the same thing down at the Hawkbrow, down at Curlew. We're going to try to adjust that intersection down there. But it's primarily sidewalks um, and, a, and a repaving at some point all the way down. A few median strips we took a lot out um, and adjusted a few things. Eddie Grennan uh, and his, um, he's the director of um, TPAL, Traffic Parking and Lighting, has been great and working with the state and That'll be all new pavement all the way down the neck, all the way down to the package store in Howe's Neck. We've, we've done extensive work now all the way up. It'll be all the way up to, uh, to Fox and Hounds and then eventually to the police station when we get there. So it's all good. Granite City Partners in Ward 1. Any other projects that we should uh, discuss? Oh, boy, with a supersized episode. We might uh, as well. We, we need to be careful, but uh, Ward 1 at the councillor's direction and uh, his eagerness really has gotten significant attention with seawalls. Uh, oh, yeah. Ward 1 is a majority of the city's older sewers, 
as all the sewage goes through Ward 1 to Nut Island, so a lot of infrastructure repairs on sewers and drains. Um, Ward 1 keeps us busy, Councilor McCarthy keeps us busy. And the seawalls have been extended two feet? The seawalls are extended uh, two feet with the option to go two more, so the foundations have been built that two more feet can be added on without new foundations along all of Adam Shore, and that model is now being designed along Manit Ave, uh, all the way down to Orleans, Brinsley, and Parkhurst. Uh, so the project is in planning and permitting for uh, continued extension. And just to chime in, I know that they have completed the 25% design, and I am scheduled to meet with Paul Costello, who's kind of the, the head of engineering for the city, very familiar with the seawalls and Al Grazioso to start discussing um, Manit app. So we're finally gonna get to that point where we will have enough information and make some decisions to have a community meeting, have the folks out and, and talk about Manit app. There's three or four hot spots on Manit app. There's the, the Brinsley Orleans area, which is a priority. They're, re they're, they're really down low on the beach. And they, have, uh, they have some old seawall uh, issues. Uh, then there's a few low spots, as you go down Man and Ave, uh, some wall issues, and then when you get near, down near the Willows at the beginning of Babcock and, um, and uh, Man and Stoughton right there, that intersection right as you come off the Willows, uh, that's a low area too that we're going to look at. So uh, then uh, after you get by the Willows, it elevates, so you're a little bit more protected but you still got to go back and look at the seawall and erosion and make sure Man and Ave has a protection from no future nor'easters because it it's taken a, takes a pounding. But I mean, you're not we're not necessarily talking about big storms because we've gotten a lot of rain mm -hmm. this winter right. and it has impacted not only Ward One but certainly Ward One. Yeah, and uh, it, it just uh, I can't say enough for um, you know. Uh, Joe and Holly's company, and, and uh, we have another company involved here, Tetra Tech, who is involved with the seawalls now, Al, the mayor, Paul Costello. Everyone has stayed focused on finishing it, even though it does take time, and people do wonder if it's going to happen, but uh, it can't happen overnight. You have to do it correctly. And uh, it'll be, if we can get Manit Ave completed, um, especially those portions that I talked about, those weak portions right now that are low or, or, or in, in dire need, uh, we'll be way ahead of the game down down on Ward 1 because that new seawall up on C Street all the way up to Chickatawba has um, done pretty well. You're never going to stop it completely, but it's, it's done a good job, and the drainage has just been superior. And water and sewer pipe work in your ward? Yeah, all the time. You know, it seems like all the time, but, you know, the mayor looks at it in, in the right way and, and looks at a street and, you know, he wants, to, he wants to tackle the infrastructure, he wants to tackle the water mains, he wants to get the gas in there, we try to coordinate with Engrid the best we can and get them in there, get the street done, and then there's a, a number of months you have to wait for it to settle before you come back in and pave and put in new sidewalks. And we have Rock Island Road uh, that's getting ready to go, Charles Street to get paved, Rock Island Road to be paved, Hawthorne to be paved, and maybe a few others. And then on top of it, we have some um, work going on now up in the Adam Shore area in regards to water mains and down in Germantown. So we try to spread it out. And uh, I, uh, I bother these folks a lot in the mayor, Ward 1. I know there's another five wards, but when I'm in there, it's all Ward 1. So, you know, well, I try to go on the power play. <laughs> Well, the, there was talk at the council meeting, uh, I believe the other evening, or it might have been prior, uh, about lead pipes and the replacement of those within the city. Yes, that's a, <coughs> excuse me, a separate initiative that is well underway. <coughs> um, the city in 2015-2016 had a very focused program and removed hundreds of lead water services. And when we say lead water services, we're actually saying a number of things. They're, there could be components of lead in the pipe between the water main and the sidewalk. 
or between the sidewalk and your meter on private property. What we all know is Quincy has very high quality drinking water. MWRA drinking water is, is award winning. When it arrives in the city and it arrives at your, at your water main, it's, it's excellent quality. There's no lead in it. However, from the pipe in between the street and your house or potentially from some plumbing fixtures in your house that once used a lead solder, um, water could pick up some lead. So the rules around managing that and removing that are really stringent. And the city is once again pursuing the, re the identification and removal of the rest of the pipes that are suspected of lead or testing indicates that there may be some lead somewhere in the pipe. The city's is removing the pipes that are in the ground up to the meter. Homeowners still may have their own plumbing issue within the home, but the ap approval pending before the council is to get funding to approve, remove and replace pipes suspected of lead, including on private property. That was just, uh, that was my next question, that uh, with this funding, help with uh, private property pipes and you just said yeah and and it's, it's, it's currently in finance yeah and, and you know it's going to come out sooner than later and get it done because it's a it's a priority it, we need to take care of that any other uh, topics that uh, you'd like to discuss that we haven't touched upon no it's great i'd like to just i uh, i feel remiss we get to be the face of some of these great projects but um We've got a slide just thanking the whole public safety headquarters team because uh, there's a gigantic team involved in this massive project, both on the city side that this building probably touches more departments than any other single project in the city of Quincy. Um, and then on the vendor side, uh, so we want to just, of course, give the team uh, a shout out. You had mentioned TPAL before, and I just uh, want to bring this up public safety, in light of public safety, and of course this building and what's going on in that area. Uh, pedestrian accidents are up, not only in the city of Quincy, but in surrounding towns. So I, I guess what can be done to ensure that more folks are safe when they're out and about not in a car? That's a, a great question and uh, Eddie Grennan and Ali Rule, our traffic engineer, wrestle with that every day. Um, from warning and detection systems uh, to driver education. Please don't text while you drive. Distracted driver yeah. issues are also a massive challenge. And, and one thing, just to go back to C Street real quick. <clears throat> when the work gets done from Palma up to, let's go all the way to the police station, but you know, when it's done, the lanes, some of the lanes in C Street that are up near the Hopbrow are very wide. And I hate to say this, but C Street can become a racetrack. Oh, easily. Mm -hmm. And they're very wide. So when we revamp C Street here in the next coming months, we'll call it, and I hope everyone has patience because it's going to come out nice, but there's going to be a lot of work. The lanes will be squeezed a little bit. Um, in regards, I think they're 13 feet wide, they should be 11. They're even bigger than they should be. If you really think about from, and I'll pick on the hot brow again, the hot brow across the street where Harry's Pizza was, it's now a, a dog uh, grooming, it's called K C Seaside Canines. But you could probably park six cars next to each other all the way across the street, even though it's a four lane, two lanes going out, two lanes coming in. People also, too, on social media think we're going down to one lane and it's going to be two lanes going out and two lanes going in. Um, but just the small median strips at certain places, the changes in traffic lights, um, we, we, we thought about how to slow down C Street the best we could because when you do have th that type of width, those lanes that are big and you are out there, you, you, some people, you know, step on the gas w way too much and come around that corner at the hot brow and come through those lights and they want to make that light at, at Moffitt, you know, and, and because the next light they're not going to get to is going to be the Fox and Hounds. And they, you know, so we're, we're trying to 
clean up the street, tighten it up a little bit to slow folks down, if, if, if that helps. That should help a little, but as Joe said, people with the texting and have to pay attention, you know, they're, they, they get out there and they got to know there's people out there. A lot of things, too, Eddie Grennan has done with T-PAL. He's got a lot of flashing crossing signs and um, both ways, both sides, uh, and part of this DOT on on um, on C Street is a lot of improvements like that that come with the package. I also want to talk about uh, bike lanes and uh, the kind of redesign of that uh, area. Right, so you're going to have the two lanes coming in, two lanes coming out, and the inside, um, I don't know the exact width, uh, but the, you can see sometimes on the streets you'll have that solid inside line that's just there after the two lanes, almost like a a little breakdown area. That'll have a bike lane going out and coming in. I almost need, uh, you spoke about education. You almost need education on how to, how motorists are to treat bike lanes. Yes. Because they get, I suppose, maybe confused. They park on, they stop on top of them. Yes. Which, of course, defeats the purpose. It is. They may, they may assume it's shared space, but it's not shared space. It's the bicyclist space. And motorists have their own lanes. I do, I, and maybe, uh, I guess I'm unaware of your involvement at Granite City Partners with the new animal shelter. Is there involvement there? I know it's not in your ward. To be honest, we, we other than um, assisting in the old animal shelter relocating and then knocking down the old building, we have not been involved in the new animal shelter. That's what I thought, but I wasn't totally certain. Thanks for setting me straight. That was uh, approved all the other night, too. That was on the on the list of things to get back on to get that done up there right and, and clean, that price clean up tag, that site too the price tag went up yeah well they run they ran into issues i am not familiar in detail <clears throat> with with that but you know say the word asbestos you don't want that around <laughs> i do we mentioned it a couple times uh, counselor uh, and it seemed to actually the father bill's uh, property <clears throat> from where it was uh, to the new spot across the way, that actually seemed to move along rather quickly. Uh, any thoughts, any, not thoughts, but any comments about uh, the facility as it stands now? I, just I think that it's, uh, you know, I, I haven't been in since they had the grand opening. Um, of course, the old registry building, the old Father Bills was cramped quarters. They couldn't get anything done. That's right, the registry. Uh, the training, <laughs> yeah, dating myself. Uh, Me the, too. The the, uh, the training though and the options over there, and you know coming in and and and, and you know using that resource center word. Um, I think it has uh, assisted a lot of those folks that need help, that now have a place to find help right there, without going out, maybe wandering, maybe not having good luck trying to educate themselves they they've got a little education institution right there now and hopefully it can help them i think so far so good with that um i mean it, it, it was there was no way but up uh, in regards to what they had for a facility the old system wasn't working no no they were trying they had the right thoughts and everything was good but they needed they needed a facility too it's kind of you know they they needed they needed something more than what they were in and again, uh, the fact that um, there is actually the way this facility is built, that there is there is hope for folks at, to stay off the street. There's that educational component that w really you didn't hear much about. Well, certainly years ago, you never heard much about that uh, because it was pretty non-existent. So yeah, and it could be that's an improvement. It could be basic jobs, that, which are probably you know, but it it gives them. It gives them some options, uh, you know, and that we're saying Broad Street now too. Uh, you know, I, I think also when you, when you, when you clean up an area and you brighten up an area, I, I don't know what that does, but I think the whole, the the the, the aura of the area, the the the, the street, uh, everything is as yeah. it seems to have brightened up over there a lot in regards to what we had. And John Malone is talking to me again after we cleared up all the construction in front of Fratelli's. So, uh, you know, we don't want to get Fratelli's mad at us. So Never. They're doing well. So that whole corridor right down to Father Bill's, I think, is a huge plus. 
Well, very good. I want to thank you all for joining me. Again, great episode, um, Joe, Holly, and of course, uh, Dave. Uh, Thanks, Mark. Frequent visitor here, but you are all welcome back in the uh, future to talk uh, more about the city. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank, thank you. you. And thank you at home for watching. Please continue to support uh, QA TV for more programming just like this.